Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and today I'm going to revisit the adjustment of GPS vectors and total station uh, total station vectors together in StarNet. I'm primarily a TBC user, but TBC does, doesn't does allow you to least scores adjust a combination of those two data types. So I did a, a previous set of videos, I believe there was four of them, where uh, I adjusted some sample data. Uh, in that case, it was RTN vectors and total station vectors. And I was trying to demonstrate that it's very hard to meet the land title survey spec of 700 at 95% confidence level if you're using RTN. So in this video, I'm going to show you a couple other things I learned. Uh, it's only the second time I've done this uh, where, I've, where I've adjusted vectors, essentially vector data coming out of TBC and StarNet and, and mixing the two data types. Uh, so uh, two or three differences in this particular example that I want to explain, and then I'll walk you through some of the data. So in this particular case, this is a real job. It's not It's not a test data. Uh, it's not test data. This is a real land title survey that I'm doing here in Stockton. Second difference is we're using static GPS vectors instead of RTN. So in theory, we should be able to meet the spec with just the static data. And then there's a couple things I, I did. Um, one of them I did in the last set of videos, but I didn't properly explain it. So I wanted, I wanted to do another video so I could show you that it's a change that you have to make to the GPS data file that comes out of TBC if you want it to run properly in StarNet. And uh, then I also just made a mistake. Uh, so I want to explain what my mistake was in this example so that you can learn from me and not make the same mistake. Um, and I've made I've made this mistake before, and I know better. And uh, it just I just slipped past me. So let me explain what we've got going on uh, as far as the project goes, and then I'll show you the mistake I made in TBC with my network adjustment, my static, my least squares adjustment of my of my static GPS vectors. I'll explain how to fix that. I'll show you the fixed project, and then I'll I'll tell you what to do in StarNet. So this is the network adjustment that I originally ran. Uh, for the project. So I've got three PBOs, PBO stations here. One of them's a cores, cores station. And then I've got my cluster of points here on the local site. So these are uh, aerial targets and some property corners that we tied out on the site here. And you can see I've got nice round air ellipses, which is what I like to see. Um, but I've got a bunch of flags. And I, I quickly looked at these flags the first time I did it and saw that these were all uh, pretty close to zero. And I just, uh, this is just a simple boo-boo that, that gets fixed. And then uh, what I didn't do was scroll down and see that I had some vectors here that were out of tolerance. And that was my mistake. I missed this. And then when I got this data into StarNet, it, it flagged it. I, I couldn't get my adjustment to close when I included the GPS data. So... Let's briefly walk through what you got to do to clean this up. So first of all, and I should have done this, so this is my fault. I, I wasn't doing good housekeeping. So first of all, let's go into our computations and our point tolerances, and let's let's fix this. So what I want to do here is I want to get rid of small errors. And since I'm trying to meet the land survey spec, I'm just going to set this to 7 hundredths. And uh, I'm going to set this to 15 hundredths. I'm not as worried about the vertical. And you can see when I do that, I, I lose the majority of my flags, but I still have a few here. So I've got this big error on number three. And part of what happens in TBC, you got to go in and get rid of these coordinate values that come in with the data collector files or the RANX files. So I'm going to do that. And you should really do that for all your points. These are just junk. We want to get rid of them once we've done the adjustment. I don't like to do it before my adjustment because sometimes that'll mess up your baseline processing. Uh, but I want to go ahead and do it after. So I'm going to do it on all these points even if they aren't flagged. And this is just good housekeeping. You need to write a little TBC macro that deletes all coordinates but the adjusted coordinates in one button click. That would be cool, huh? This is a junk point. Get rid of that. Yeah, 250 P256 has an office entered as well because that's the point I'm holding in my minimally constrained adjustment. 
So once we've get, gotten rid of these data collector coordinates, we're going to rerun our recompute report. And you can see now I've only got a few errors left. Uh, so this is this is the real crap in the project, <laughs> the real bad data. And you'll see that I've got errors on points 6 and 7, and, and I've got these vectors that are being flagged that are also problems to 6 and 7. And so basically what happened is I'm, I was doing some static data on this site, and we were under underneath some high-voltage power lines. And uh, I just didn't sit long enough on the points. So we were there for 15 minutes and it just wasn't enough time. So some of my vectors, when I was processing, if we'd have been local, we'd probably been fine, but we were processing out these long baselines to these cores. And some of my vectors just didn't, didn't turn out. Um, and I should have deleted these uh, bad vectors and I didn't do that. So when I brought this data into Starnet, it failed. So let me explain real quick, why am I getting a good, uh, what looks like a good adjustment in TBC, but not in Starnet, and then we'll fix this. And the basic problem is um, in my project settings. So I've, I think I've explained this before in my videos on static process, uh, static data processing in TBC. But you come down here to your default standard errors. Uh, by default, this is set to baseline processor. And when you're processing a network that has really long baselines with really short baselines, um, you can't do that uh, because you want to adjust your longer baselines more. They have more error. So in order to enable that, you have to click project settings. And when you do that, when you set project settings here in your default standard errors, then when you go to GNSS, uh, TBC pays attention to this top section here. And you got to be really careful with this top section, not so much with the fixed error, but with the PPMs. Because a very small change in these PPMs makes a huge difference in whether or not your network passes your T-square test. And basically what happened is I've got these PPMs set too high. So 0.4 PPM, this network passes the chi square test, but I, but it passes with this bad data in it, which is not what I want. So you got to be really careful with that, with that setting. So what I want to do here instead is I want to actually select these bad vectors and I'm going to delete them. Because the data to those on those vectors is no good. And then I'm going to rerun my adjustment or rerun my recompute. Sorry. And you can see that a lot of my problems go away. Now, when you do that, you have to be careful because if, you, if you're deleting vectors, you might end up with some points that are just hanging out radially tied. And I was, I was fortunate in this case that did not happen to me, uh, but it could, uh, but I, but all my uh, points are still tied to one or more point, one or more points. Now I still have some flags here. So let's go in and look at our point derivation report and see if we can figure out what's going on. So you can see here, I've still got a bad vector, this 268 to 6. It's not even getting flagged, but it's coming up here. So what I want to do is I want to come in here. we got to have to delete this vector because it's no good. So I'm going to do that. And you can still see 6 is tied for multiple points, which is what I want. We're just losing that tie up to the cores. And then uh, we've still got a bad vector. It looks like the vector from 306 to 7 is bad. So I'm going to delete that as well. Again, 7 still tied for multiple points. So I'm okay there. It's not a radial tie. So now I've got a clean network. My flags are gone. Okay, so I notice I don't have an air ellipse on 4, which means that might be a radial tie. But I'm going to rerun the adjustment and check because it looks like it's got a couple more vectors coming in there. So we're going to go ahead and rerun our network adjustment. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit adjust. You can see I get my ellipse on four there, so it's not radial. It's not tied radially. It's got more than one observation. And uh, you can see my ref reference factor is way below one. And that's because those PPM settings are just way too high. So we want to come in here and drop this down. I drop it down to a tenth of a PPM. And you can see now I'm at almost exactly one. So I've got a way better network adjustment here. I don't think I've moved those coordinates a lot, probably a few hundredths of a foot. Uh, but if you notice, if I run the network adjustment report, you come down here and you can see when you look at my error, uh, error ellipses here, um, we can just look at the semi-major because that's the worst. I'm now meeting the Alta spec. So even though I had some static data with 15-minute sessions under that high-voltage power lines, when I get bad, get rid of those bad baselines, I'm, I'm 
meeting the spec. I'm under 700s here at 95%, so that's good. But I went ahead and put that data in StarNet anyways because I had, when I knew we were having problems with the GPS, we went out and we we tied all of our property corner monuments with the total station, and most of them, if not all of them, most of them were double tied. I'm not going to save these changes because I have a good clean network project that those changes made. So be careful with that PPM uh, adjustment setting on your GPS data. You got to you got to look for those bad vectors and make sure you get rid of those flag vectors before you come into StarNet. Now let me show you what uh, what comes out of TBC. So what comes out of TBC? So you're gonna you're gonna export a dot uh, ASCII file out of TBC, and then you're gonna convert that. Let's just do it. So if you come over here, say import data, um, and I'm gonna select the file that comes out of TBC. Is this ASC? It's ASCII file. This is a Trimble data exchange format. And I'm just going to open that, and I'm going to convert it, and I'm just going to put test on here so I can show this to you guys. So this is the, the thing I didn't show you in the last set of videos on StarNet. So let's go, go ahead and open that file. Something didn't work there. Let me try it one more time. Sorry, guys. All right. I think it worked that time. Okay. So this is the, how the GPS file looks when it comes out of StarNet. And you can see that it's got, uh, if you read the spec, uh, this is really the only line you need for the GPS. So these, these extra two lines, the G2 and the G3, are the estimated errors in the baseline. And I've noticed that StarNet and TBC have the same problem. So when you're, when you're running a network that mixes really long baselines with really short baselines, uh, these, these built-in errors do not work. <laughs> it's just, it's not given, it's given, uh, it's treating all, all the baselines like they're roughly the same length. And it's not, it ne you need to put more of the adjustment in the longer baselines and less in the shorter. And so in StarNet, if you have these lines in your GPS file, your .gps, the G2s and the G3s, um, StarNet ignores your project settings and holds these values. And the reason it does that, if you come in here, you can see in your project settings under GPS, it only applies the errors here um, if the vectors have no supplied weighting. And what these G2 and G3 records are doing is they're supplying the weighting. So this is being ignored, and that's not what I want. It's essentially the same... Uh, stinking switch that's in TBC. So what you want to do is you want to get rid of those G2 and G3 values, which you can see I've done here. And I'm at, so I'm actually going to get rid of that. I just wanted to show you guys what that looked like. And and I didn't, I did this in my last, uh, pro, my last, uh, my test case that I did in the last video series, but I forgot to show you guys. Uh, so you got to get rid of those. Okay. Now just real quick, let me show you what I did on the total station data. So this is what um, this is what comes out of TB what came out of TBC here, and so you can see this is a mess. Uh, so the first thing I did was I got I got rid of all these coordinate values, um, and then I consolidated these uh, angle and DV values into uh, just M values because it's easier for me to read, and and I showed that in the last set of videos. Logan Logan told me how to do that. So this is a much cleaner file as you guys can see. So <clears throat> I've got the actual coordinates that I want to hold in the adjustment here, and I've commented out the, the coordinate values of the property corner mons because I want to use adjusted, I want to calculate uh, adjusted values for those. And then you can see I've just put in a little comment here for each setup so I know where I'm at with the total station. And you'll notice most of these are, are converted to M values. If you look at the raw file that comes out of uh, Trimble Data, Trimble Business Center, you get a bunch of these DV values for your backsite. And uh, thanks to Will Paul, I know, uh, my boss Will Paul, I want to delete those because if you leave all those backsite, every time they check the backsite, you'll get one of these values. And essentially what you're doing is you're, is you're artificially increasing the accuracy of your network 
because every time you shoot that backside check, you're not you don't have an independent setup either on your backside or your total station, and so you're not really getting all of your setup error there. And so um, what I decided to do was I did go ahead and leave one. I left one backside check in because I think I think it's okay to have one valid. You know, there that that captures the setup error of one setup and one backside check. So you can see on each of my setups, I do I did leave one. One of the, you can either call it a station setup or a backside check. I left that in for each entry. Okay, so I just wanted to explain that. I didn't do a good job of that either. So let's see what happens when we run that in, in StarNet. And I found that um, it works better if I just run one, one at a time before I combine them. So if we run just the total station data here in this file, you can see I'm getting... Good values. I'm a little higher than one here, but I'm passing my chi square. And if you come down here and look at my uh, residuals at the 95% level, I'm well below the 700 spec for the land title survey. So that's great. So got a good network adjustment there, and then we can add in the GPS data. Actually, let's do the. We'll just do the GPS data by itself. Oh, it's uh. It's not liking that I don't have my coordinate values turned on, so let's do that. All right, I noticed I'm having a problem. Now I remembered. Um, I'm having a problem here. This has to do with whether these values are state plane or metric, and I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I need to uh, I need to talk to Will and Logan, my coworkers, and find out. Uh, for some reason, when I add the state plane coordinates. Uh, to this file, uh, th this adjustment chokes. I mean, it ha I think it has to do with the fact that this uh, GPS file, the values are in metric. That's weird. Uh, but when I hold them in the total station file, everything works. So you got, I got to run these together. So you notice right now I'm getting an error factor of five. It has to do with those coordinate values. When I comment those out and just run it using the coordinates and then in this other network file, uh, everything is fine. Um, so somehow these coordinates are, are messing up, they're messing up that adjustment. So you can see, see I'm still passing my chi square test. And with the GPS data, the static vectors included, static, static GPS vectors included. And when I come down here and just look at my uh, error ellipses again at the 95%, just the major, man, that's really tight. Um, so you'll notice I've got one two stations that don't meet the spec those are both cores um, and neither one of them are the core stations I held uh, so I'm gonna kick those out because I don't I don't really feel like uh, they're not they're not material to what I'm doing on the site um, so I'm gonna kick those values out and uh, say that I met the 700 700 spec and I, and I might just say on my survey that those were included in the original adjustment, but that I kicked out the observations. Uh, but other than those two core stations, uh, everything here meets is well under the 700 tolerance for the spec. So that makes me feel good. So I just wanted to show you guys that. So just kind of recap. Um, before you export your static GPS vectors out of TBC, make sure you have a good network adjustment. Be careful with that PPM sitting, the PPM error adjustment in your TBC project settings. Uh, if you get that too high, uh, you'll pass a network with bad data in it. And that's what I did. I had a couple vectors because I was under the power lines. I had some static vectors that were, that were just bad. Uh, not, like, not like egregiously bad, but a couple tenths bad. Uh, so they needed to come out. And the reason I caught that problem in StarNet was because I had the PPM uh, setting in StarNet was way lower. Um, so uh, it was a really easy error to catch. Um, I should check the flags and I didn't. So you got to do good housekeeping in your TBC project. Make sure you don't have any flags before you export your vectors for StarNet. And if you do have flags, you better know why. <laughs> better understand why. So don't be sloppy. I was a little sloppy the first time. And then the other, the second thing is, um, you know, you just make sure to, that you delete your G2 and G3 records in your GPS file when you bring your static uh, vectors into your StarNet adjustment. If you want it to apply your project settings in here, if you want it to apply this, and I think you need to apply this when you're mixing very short and very long baselines in the same adjustment. Neither StarNet or TBC do really good with that. 
um, with adjusting that kind of network using the built-in baseline errors that come out of TBC. So it might, it might not even really be a Starnet problem. It's The problem is the estimated baseline errors coming out of TBC aren't good. And if you have those G2 and G3 records in your GPS file, that's what Starnet's going to use. And that's not what you want. All right, guys, that was about double the length of my normal video, but I thought this was important. Um, and I'm going to keep keep working on this and beating some kinks out of this process. And uh, If I can find out <laughs> why I'm having a problem here, it may be I've, I grabbed the wrong point. Maybe one of these uh, coordinate values isn't for the for the right uh, station name here. Uh, but anyways, I'll, I'll get that figured out. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Hope the video was helpful.